and welcome to the second part of what was a very interesting discussion in part one. So in part one, we have discussed the role and functions of the WRMA, its nexus to WASCO. We have looked at some of the general, uh, the general mandate of the WRMA. As we came to the end of the discussion in part one, we were focusing on the disaster vulnerability reduction projects intervention, its assistance to the WRMA via funding for a watershed management plan. So we are going to continue with this, and as we go forward, we're going to look at some of the things that the, w, uh, that the DPRMP has assisted the WRMA with, and that includes the wastewater management strategy, that includes optimizing the hydromet system, and uh, also you're going to hear some of the things. The rainwater harvesting system is another way that the DPRMP has assisted with uh, has assisted the WRMA. But just before we get into this second part of the discussion, let me tell you something that you may not know. The, the two new blocks of the Chauzel Secondary School, because after the earthquake in about 2007, there were some issues with the Chauzel Secondary School, two blocks in particular. They were being undermined as a result of the earthquake. And so, courtesy the, w, the, w, the DBRP, these blocks were reconstructed climate resilient blocks via the DPRP. So if you didn't know, well, now you know. So Jason, at the end of the first um, part of the program, we were looking at the intervention, the watershed management plan. So yeah, you continue and speak to it. Yes, so this um, uh, DVRP funded initiative is very critical to the, um, to the WRMA because um, what it did, it assisted the, um, the agency in characterizing one of our watersheds. But apart from that, it also <coughs> um, assisted in creating guidelines. And some of the officers received training on how to go about in terms of characterizing the, the watershed because we have to do it for all watersheds. Now, we have to develop that capacity in-house so that we can do it ourselves because if we have to depend on funding by the time maybe we reach the 10th watershed, we might have to revisit the first watershed because so much has changed. Mm -hmm. Okay. So <laughs> we basically have mm -hmm. to build that in-house capacity. So that uh, initiative from the DVRP, it was very critical because it provided um, some training and guidance. And apart from that, they're also assisting in developing our in-house capacity um, mm -hmm. further. And just to speak about um, uh, just some two of the other initiatives that are also critical. It's um, funded by the DVRP is the optimization of our hydrometeorological network. So this is a joint collaboration between WRMA and the Med Services where we're going to um, upgrade our existing infrastructure. So we're going to replace it with new parts and we're going to introduce new stations and the idea is that we try to make our network as much as possible functional in actually um, collecting real-time information. So basically we can stay in the office and see what the rainfall events are happening, say in Canaries, in, in Viewfort, mm -hmm. in, um, uh, in Margaret Hoot, wherever we have our, our stations set up. Now, piggy piggybacking off that initiative, we also have another initiative um, funded by the DVRP <coughs> where we're creating an integrated um, uh, database um, solution where the information coming out of all those sensory instruments would now feed into a central repository where now we can create um, data products that is in function of what um, uh, the public and institutions want to see. So it's, uh, it's all about getting the information in real time and all of that now feeds into um, early warning, forecast, mm -hmm. and what have you. So we're actually moving forward in many different spheres mm -hmm. uh, with the assistance and the guidance of the, um, from the DVRP. Okay. Yes. Yeah, fantastic. I want to ask you, Rupert, because at the end of the day, when the wheels of government move, it is supposed to be benefiting the end user. Mm -hmm. 
it is supposed to be benefiting me, it's supposed to be benefiting Joe public. So we are rewind I'm rewinding a little bit back to the watershed management plan. plan. Yeah. How does that benefit the ordinary solution. I know guidelines, as Jason indicated, were also mm -hmm. established. Yes. So uh, generally speaking, how does the common man benefit? The common person will, will benefit from this uh, in many ways. Uh, when you one looks at a watershed, we live in the watersheds, and we all have, have different roles to play. We have farmers in the watersheds. We, we have professionals. We have uh, contractors. Um, all different uh, professions living in a watershed and using that watershed. Now, uh, now although we speak about it as watershed, it's land. Mm -hmm. And you have recreational activities, you have sports, you have, you have education occurring in, 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 in that space. And you need to plan all of these activities in a way that it doesn't adversely impact on your water resource because these all of us rely on water you mentioned that water is life it, it, it is in fact life so while we occupy that space together mm -hmm. the WRMA is charged with that responsibility to manage those the water resources that is also in the space mm -hmm. so now we 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 and Jason spoke about the data, the data is important to us because that will inform actions we take towards managing um, the water resource and to guide um, the common man, as you say, as to certain practices that are desirable and those that are not so desirable. Okay. The, the, hydromet, the hydromet system, which Jason referred to, you did speak to how it's going to benefit the public in some way by way of forecasting and I think this is very critical so if you want to add a little to this as to how the DVRP funded hydromet system or to 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 um, make it better to improve on how it functions or to get you the the, the, the tools you know, right. how does that benefit and, and, and okay. Jason is more okay. is way yeah, more um, <coughs> aware um, of, of the yeah, technical so, details um, of that so yeah so you'd be aware that uh, currently we have um, free siren systems that were set up in in ancillary canneries and and and, and, and Masha. Yes. Right right now the the system is set up uh, well it's manual for uh, it the alerts has to be sent out uh, manually mm -hmm. but ideally um, have they, uh, when uh, it have we tested them? Have they? Uh, yeah, they've they've been tested yes. in Masha as well. Yes, mm -hmm. they 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 do work. But um, I, I, ideally, the, the idea is that um, it's an automatic system where, based on rainfall intensities, um, it would just trigger the, the system because, like I mentioned before, the landmass is so small that, uh, I mean... You get flash flooding. Yeah, flash flooding mm -hmm. happens. It's instantaneous. Yeah. Mm -hmm. By the time you know, or if you wait on a water level to tell you that water is a new in less than 10 minutes, so with the intensities, with the rain falling, it could automatically trigger and tell you what it is that uh, can be expe expected. So one of the ideas is to tie that whole system, those two systems together to make it one. Mm -hmm. So it's, uh, it is just based on the, um, uh, the, the intensities okay. for you those see areas. So, so we, we, are due, we are due for our break mm -hmm. in this second part of the discussion, mm -hmm. uh, but clearly the intervention of the DVRP is clearly assisting the WRME and by extension the, the citizenry yes. in, a, in a major way. Exactly. So uh, do stay yes with us. Is. We're going to our first break and the second part of our discussion will be back in a moment. Bola mea c'est un bon place pour un bon temps, mais c'est faux qu'on ait sin tsunami. Sous Bola mea, qu'on sentit à qu'on prendre un pire. BC, couvert pau, Ek eskiwe tamblante a dobout, ek koui mouti pouvou. Sou wel ame a ka wichi le, ek ek a kite lans la vitman. Koui mouti pli ho! Sou tam la me a ka fe an twol de zol. Koui mouti pli ho! Sou wen nepot se sin sa la, koui mouti pli ho kou ka jwen mon, ebe troisième etaj an kai, ek espere les etorite anonse ou sa desan. Koui, koui, koui mouti pli ho! Apwan le sin tsunami. 
La pépane est assez temps pour annoncer un tsunami qui a approché. C'est une commission par groupe management des arts bien fort et classe management des arts en saint lucie financée par l'Agence pour le développement international Amérique, Bureau Assistance des Arts de l'autre pays. Thank you for staying with us. Welcome back. And we are just going to be tying up our discussion on the hydromet system that the DBRP has been assisting with ensuring that it functions properly and that all of the parts have been put together. And we are also going to be touching on the rainwater harvesting system, again funded by the DBRP. But just before we go into this, another fact. Did you know that the Canals Roadway or Highway was reconstructed utilizing DBRP funds? Well, if you didn't know, now you know. So let's get back to tab the discussion on the hydromet system, how that DBRP intervention is benefiting the public. Um, yes, so, so like I m mentioned, is getting the information in real time. And that, um, that information will not only be used by the WRMA, but it would also fit into um, other systems because there is also an uh, early warning system that is supposed to be implemented by the government of St. Lucia and all of that in situ um, um, data slash information will be fed into the system so at the end the result could tell you exactly um, what, is, um, what is happening and what is expected and also in terms of uh, modeling like flood modeling this is a this is very critical for uh, aspect of flood modeling because it would be the input whether it's um, your your dis discharge data or whether it's your rainfall data to tell you whether you expect flooding in a particular area or not so all of that would be used to calibrate the model so we would be at the level that you know you see that in the state sometimes they tell you okay well they expect flooding there at at um, uh, in 12 hours, 10 hours, that's something that we're looking to work, um, work to, but we're in the right now at the infancy stage. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but definitely, I mean, it's exciting for the WRMA. Yeah, clearly, clearly, because we can see that contributing to the saving of lives, you know, saving of property, people being able to move at a, exactly. you know, at a, at a time that they should and so on. So, yes. Yeah, uh, I'm, yeah. ha I'm happy that you mentioned saving a life, uh, saving life yeah. of life, because, uh, I mean, Canaries, Ancillary, Marsha, these areas, uh, people live in close proximity to these w the water course. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, hence the reason why we chose those areas. Yeah. And um, what we've implemented, because we're aware of the, the characteristics of these watersheds, and in, in Marsha's case, the catchment, uh, Jason spoke about the little time that you have to evacuate right. if there is an event. And so we see the value in the need to put in instrumentation that will help us mm. forecast what's happening upstream so that we can react and protect livelihoods mm. and so okay. on. So which takes us into the rainwater harvesting system. The DVRP funded a workshop and uh, contractors and plumbers from all over the country benefited from this training. Tell me some more about this. Okay, um, I just want to add first that uh, part of the WRMA's mandate is actually to find alterna alternate sources of water. So this is one of our responsibilities, one of our functions. Mm -hmm. And we're actually working towards that. And we see um, uh, rainwater harvesting as uh, a very viable alternate, uh, alternate um, uh, um, source of water because we know that you know after uh, a major event um, water is something that everybody always one of the first thing that persons look for is water even before the event you see persons buying a lot of bottled water um, and rainwater harvesting it's uh, it, it it fills that immediate need for water and most of those events you have water related events so you have a lot of water so why not capture that water because you have all that that rainwater in the moment of the event and then after there is nothing and right. persons go out so we think that is something that is um, something that's very viable and also it, I, it, it adds to that awareness uh, a sensitization mm -hmm. for conservation you know of the resource and it adds value let's person know that this resource has a has, has a value mm -hmm. and it's something that is not very costly and it can actually bring down your 
your water bill. Okay. So in, in the event of climate change, and climate change is basically a water-related okay. event, it's something that can act as an immediate um, alternate source of water right. on so, so it was important that the DVRP come in and assist with this, the training and so on. And I think there's a plan for the WRMA to get person certified. Um, yes, well, um, yeah, well, as um, part of the deliverables, we had um, a, a training workshop for the training workshop, and we, we, um, the participants were um, uh, contractors and plumbers, and well, it was a first step in terms of getting them um, uh, the NVQ National Vocational Qualification, right? But we're looking to have that as uh, uh, a full-fledged. Um, uh, um, qualification, so it's more or less like creating the portfolio. So starting to create the portfolio to get NVQ certified, so that they in turn can either train other persons or they can do the implementations of the um, rainwater system, because um, it's it's critical that persons um, get it right in terms of uh, when we're looking at whether you're looking for it to be uh, either the system to be portable or non-portable you know, to prevent from getting, making the, the water quality deteriorate or whatever. So there are certain steps that need to be taken into consideration. And it's a good avenue for, you know, for, uh, for, for, for business. Okay. <laughs> now, really I, uh, interestingly, the DVRP funded workshop introduced, I could oh. say perhaps is some, yeah, some degree of emphasis, a first flush rainwater harvesting system design. Can you speak to that? Okay, well, the first flush is um, basically what we're saying that, um, let's say we're looking at the, the catchment area being the rooftops and stuff, and we're saying that um, there are many things on the, on, on the roof that may deteriorate the, the water quality, that may be hazardous to it. So what you're saying, um, in the first instance, that water would not be part of make up your storage. That would be flushed away. So whatever impurities or whatever it is that you have that would deteriorate the water quality would be washed away. And then now you can start to collect water that you could put for your portable or non-portable needs. Okay. Yeah. So as we, we're coming to the end of the discussion, we have about 60 seconds left. I'm going to allow you some 20 seconds to wrap up and to, to speak to the benefits of those interventions that have been done courtesy of the Disaster Vulnerability Reduction Project and how it is impacting the WRMA positively. Okay, in many ways, uh, DVRP is, is helping uh, the WRMA in improving its management systems. Uh, we spoke to uh, data collection, which is critical for us, and we also spoke to uh, a hydromet, the hydromet system. And w just to mention, we work in, in close collaboration with the Met services as well mm -hmm. um, w um, when we implement that project. So that assists us, assists us in uh, forecasting and so on, and in uh, compiling data that we use to manage the water resource to improve our management of. And then we, we the DVRP is funding the project that you just mentioned, which speaks to uh, rainwater harvesting training in that area. But a component of that intervention also is water conservation, mm -hmm. which is part of our mandate anyhow. All right, so I'm and gonna move to yes. Jason, thank you. Jason, I'll allow you another 20 seconds to yes. wrap up. Well, at the WRMA, uh, like I say, our mandate is broad, the staff complement is, is small, and we have very varying degrees of um, qualified personnel. So we're very happy that the, the, the DVRP is actually helping us to build that human capacity that we have in-house because persons have to wear multiple hats, you know, in order to get the job done. So they actually assess our needs and they see the critical areas that we need assistance, so not only human capacity, but also in terms of uh, additional resources to go out into the, um, into the catchment to get the relevant data, because that's what it is. Whatever decision that we take, it has to be based on empirical um, yeah, evidence. So um, 
Yes, so the DVRP has definitely assisted the, the, the agency to move many steps forward. Mm -hmm. So thank yes. you so much, gentlemen. And, and let me just say from to the viewers, thank you for listening. And we've been speaking about the Disaster Vulnerability Reduction Project, DVRP in short, which has assisted the WRMA in a major way. And just to let you know that there are about some 100 different initiatives across mm. several implementing agencies that the DVRP is benefiting. And two major things that I'd like you to remember, among several, but two I'm going to pull out to you, is that the DVRP is the biggest financial arrangement, if you will, between the government of St. Lucia and the World Bank to date. And the second thing is that the DVRP is all about ensuring that we reduce uh, the, the country's re um, the risk in times of disaster is drastically reduced. So on that note, I'd like to say thank you and goodbye.